home guy that I miss my home show. It's always been kind of more of a green, hybrid, clean diesel, you know, that, that element of the business. But this year I feel a little bit different. I feel like what we're seeing is a is downsizing. I mean, there's a lot of cars that are being shown here. This is a very heavy SUV and truck market. Uh, SUV trucks are domestics, cars, small cars are imports. I'm seeing a lot of cars being introduced here, so that's cool. Return of Mazda in a weird way. You know, Mazda sat underneath the, as you can say, the mother hen or the mother ship of Ford for so long. They're making nice cars, but it was always, there was some, you could really look deep inside of it. There's a lot of Ford bits and pieces in it. Now Mazda is, is, I think there's still a small ownership stake, only a couple percent by Ford, but otherwise it's its own company again. And I think this show has been kind of, for Mazda to have this big of a display and this much and have the first press conference today, that's kind of unique. Because they've always been such a kind of little edge niche, kind of thing. and uh, they now with their new CX-5 SUV, they've got a vehicle that's all Mazda. Their platform, their engine, their their design, their everything. So it's it, for me, it's kind of like all right, Mazda's properly stepping away. From the They're pulling uh, weight out of the vehicles uh, because as soon as you can start getting weight out of the car, then it's automatically more fun. And if you pull weight out of the car, then you don't have to put as big of a motor in it to propel it, so you can get better fuel efficiency. And if you make it aerodynamic, it slides in the air quicker, giving you more fun, or better speeds, and also um, better fuel efficiency. So I think they're really going for what the whole industry. For. I mean, let's be honest, they are a good microcosm of what the business is going to be. Everything's downsizing. Everything's getting lighter. Um, you know, a two-liter engine a couple years ago was, you know, that's like the car you didn't want. <laughs> and uh, now a two-liter engine, especially a turbocharged, is going to be the standard. It's going to be the one. That's going to be a big motor in a couple years. Unless you start to electrify it. That's all. Up until just a couple years ago, they were kind of on the ropes, to be fair. Uh, they had some decent products, but they had reliability issues, and, and not just perception. There were some real issues with um, silly things breaking on it, headlights going out. You put the windshield, or sorry, the uh, passenger window down, it doesn't go back up. Just crazy stuff like that. Uh, they, as a company on a global basis, now we, when we look at Volkswagen, we kind of see it in this market as being like a, I don't know, maybe like a nice Toyota or something like that. In the rest of the world, Volkswagen is highly aspirational. In fact, a quick story, I lived in England for a couple years, and I, we just got to, I just started working in this office, and there was all this talk amongst the people in the, in the office. Oh, you hear uh, this guy, so-and-so got a new car. Ooh, you really got a new car, how exciting. So I'm a new guy in the office, right? So I go, oh, let's kind of go along. I like talking about cars. And we go down there, and he's got a Golf Freedom. And everybody's like, ooh, ooh. isn't it great, James? And I'm like, that's fine. But that's, a, see, that's one of the interesting things about this business. Based on different markets, there are much uh, different perceptions. When I was there, I had a choice of BMW and Audi, Mercedes, or Lexus as my company. I chose the Lexus just because, in my way of thinking at that point, that was the car that I wanted to have. People were like, what are you doing? Jack crap. They were all they were blasting it because it's all a perception issue. Volkswagen, as a company, does not understand why they don't do as well in the U.S. as they do in the rest of the world. In fact, between Toyota, General Motors, and Volkswagen, they're all jo jockeying for who's going to be the biggest car company in the world in the near future. These guys have said uh, determinedly that they are going to be the biggest car company to see. We need a big move here in the U.S. market. By the year 2018, I think they've said they're going to sell between Volkswagen and Audi almost uh, 800,000 units, almost a million units. Right now, between Volkswagen and Audi, they probably get about half of that. So they've got a, a small amount of time to make some big changes. And again, they've had this perception quality issue uh, for some time. That's what they're really approaching. And as you can see from their display here, they had a lot of different cars. They're really going a lot of different directions from larger SUVs. Clean diesel is a big thing for them. Uh, they don't understand why we as Americans don't like diesel. Diesel is a dirty word in every market except the U.S. No, you're crazy. It, 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 it. <laughs> and it shouldn't be because if you've driven any of the new diesels, they're fun. They're the, in fact, in the case of the BMW 3 Series, that's that's the proper driver's car. It's the diesel. It's got tons of power. Now, like the guys from Porsche played with it for a while, they kind of lowered it, and yeah. stretched it, and, and the whole idea was that the Beetle would become a little bit of a. Uh, this is probably not very PC, but a bit of a secretary. 
It was something that you didn't really got buy because it was fun to drive. You got it because it was cute. And then it was cute, there's no doubt about it. But uh, now they're trying to make it much more aggressive. They got nice two liter turbo engines with it, diesels as well. So again, Volkswagen is a company that's basically said, we're gonna be the biggest car company in the world and we're gonna change the impression of Volkswagen in the US. The game starts now. It's like, a, it's a concept car that you can buy. It's a real, I mean, look from the back. Some of these incentives to help them kind of spend what they're spending, this kind of world domination thing. 
it's a bad thing at this point. I don't know mm -hmm. for sure, but it would make sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's ice cream. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Exactly right. So, but it's, it is working in that they are creating products that are really resonating with people. I tend to think that the Toyota recall thing, you guys have heard about this a couple of years ago, I think that, and both the Toyota and Honda, that made a lot of people who automatically went on and bought the next generation Camry or Roll or whatever. And they go, I'm going to have a look at something that I'll, you know, I'll just think about something else. It was around that time that these guys started coming out with some pretty cool looking cars, as well as Ford and General Motors and others. So it's really kind of taking the, the shine, you know, off of uh, what were the old standards, Camry and Ford, Rav4, stuff like that. They've introduced a car here today called the Azera. I'm not going to pass judgment. I'd like to hear what you guys have. My production. I toured the facility that makes the Sonata and the Elantra about six or seven months ago. And they're, they're, as soon as they make it, it's sold. But they can only make 300,000 a year. Uh, so that's all they've got. So you're not going to see them like become market dominators because they just they can't make enough. It's a good problem to have. It means they don't have to put incentives on it. They can sell them as close to MSRP as possible. But it's uh, they are limited by that. So you won't see Hyundai just you know become the new Honda Accord or the number one market leader because they don't have capacity. So you guys like this car, right? And I, I don't know. I'm just asking your opinion. And, and that's what this, this game's all about. It's changing perceptions right. one moment at a time. And uh, it's a product-led business. And these guys, you know, they had quality issues. They came out with a warranty, 100,000 mile warranty. Mm -hmm. And they had um, uh, resale value issues. They have a program where they guarantee resale value. So they've got the business side of it done. Now they're making products for people. They actually say, hey, look, I got a Hyundai. Why'd you get a Hyundai? Here's why. Oh, now I get it.